now is now my micro microphone is on hello everyone um i'm uh, very glad and proud to be here with you because uh, this is uh, a fantastic uh, uh, gathering of uh, philosophers from the entire world and uh, because um, it's uh, a pleasure and an honor for me to to give you uh, some uh, of my uh, experience and my uh, thought uh, during this uh, pandemic and uh, some uh, experience that I had with um, philosophical practice in this uh, period. I am uh, Antonio Sandu. I'm uh, from uh, Romania. I'm a PhD professor at uh, Stefan Cermari University from uh, Suceava, Romania. And uh, I uh, teach uh, there ethics, sociology, uh, and uh, mainly uh, applied to ethics. And uh, I uh, and bioethics, so uh, I'm in the field of, uh, of ethics, but my um, interest is uh, from 11 years. Uh, I'm interested in uh, philosophical uh, counseling and philosophical practice because I'm also graduating uh, in social work. So uh, I always think uh, counseling is not necessary uh, psychological one and uh, neither uh, psychiatric only uh, it's more important to have uh, existential answers to existential questions uh, from uh, the people and this uh, this time this pandemic time have uh, raised many existential questions to the people. First of all, we notice uh, the medicalization of uh, social life. We notice uh, the medicalization of the so society. Uh, society practically represents the effect of uh, what we would call risk society. The fact, the fact that society is more uh, easily aware of the various risks that individuals feel threatened about. Uh, sometimes the idea of medicalization, the human condition, is rich, which is uh, nothing more than uh, treatable disorder. Uh, and uh, many of, that, of uh, us uh, start to believe that uh, to be human is treatable. But if we cannot be human, and we, if we treat our condition, what can we be? So uh, the philosophers are, are um, welcome to give an answer what is uh, treatable and what is uh, necessary in uh, being uh, human. And uh, in this uh, in this time, to be uh, human, to be afraid of, uh, of dying, afraid of uh, being is isolated, afraid of being locked down and social distancing, so many things that are, were unusual, still are unusual for human conditions, but uh, to evoke the limit of uh, human uh, uh, con uh, conditions. In these days, the pandemic caused the whole society to be restricted, social activity to be shrinked, and to talk about social distancing. What could social distancing mean if we as human to be close connected? And uh, this our learn from our history to be to be connect each other, to be gathering, but now we have to distance from each other. It is possible in the context in which we are talking about, uh, what we say, medicalized society. Uh, well, the effort for public health prevails over the economic, social development, and so on. And most of all, of all it prevails on, uh, on uh, human uh, condition. Well, um, we're afraid, but this afraid is uh, something that we always do. Uh, 
Heidegger says, well, uh, to, uh, to be human is uh, sometimes to, uh, to have uh, anguish, to have fears, and uh, so on. Uh, I quote um, Oscar Brennifer for a wonderful speech he gave in this period, and we say, well, why are we afraid? We are afraid to die. Can we, evo can we evo avoid to die? Can we do something not to die? Well, if we can do, then uh, we should uh, not worry, but do what is important to be done in order to not to die. If we uh, not, we, can we not avoid that? We can fight, but we still uh, in dive condition, so we are uh, not uh, gods. We, die after all. So it's, as human we die after all, so the fear is nat natural, but um, is not necessary uh, to, to, be, to be afraid and uh, to be afraid and uh, this uh, overcome, uh, overcome uh, us as a person. Uh, answering the concerns about the crisis of the philosophy as uh, public uh, adherence to traditional fields of philosophy, some philosophers consider uh, that uh, uh, academic discourse is no longer uh, important for philosophy because um, in our time philosophy um, is not is important to be uh, in the practice in the practice field not only in the, the our our tower that nobody understands so it's uh, in other times that uh, Kant have or Hegel have is sometimes maybe closer to Socrates period where uh, philosophers came into Agora and asked questions. So well, it's what we as a philosopher, a practitioner philosopher should do, but Agora is no longer accessible because of COVID-19. So uh, we don't have an Agora anymore, but we uh, have a new, a new kind of Agora. A new kind of Agora is uh, virtual. Agora, it's um, it's some it's a some place without space. It's some place that is not in physical space. So uh, uh, COVID or other uh, germs could not affect us in in virtual. But other viruses still uh, affect us, and uh, most of all, our own fears come uh, come there with us, and uh, is with us now. We can move our practice from real space to virtual space, but uh, we, sh we should adapt. Not only the practice, we've got many philosoph practitioner, uh, philosophical practitioner already done online consultations and uh, online trainings and online groups and so on. That's nothing, uh, there's nothing new, but new is that uh, our society move uh, forward uh, to what uh, I, uh, usually to call virtualization of uh, social spaces. Uh, why virtualization of social spaces? Because many social interaction are going online because uh, physically uh, are uh, forbidden. So in, in, Mar in March or April were forbidden. In Romania is not so close now, but the, the uh, went through this uh, uh, close uh, uh, the old activities and uh, practices. So we uh, started this uh, phenomena of virtualization of social spaces for many years, for 10 years, or never or more, uh, where the social interaction are mainly doing uh, in a virtual space, in virtual reality. But uh, since now, uh, we have accelerated this uh, uh, this uh, kind of interaction. Uh, education, move uh, virtual um, work, uh, move to virtual in uh, so many cases. Even church go to virtual. And uh, in Orthodox uh, here in Romania, and I think also in Russia, 
there was not access directly to the to the church, but the the, the, the religious service were done on uh, on internet, and uh, a lot of people uh, take part in the in the religious services online. So, uh, what kind of uh, new society, of new uh, of new life, of new in social interaction are coming uh, from this period and what will happen in the future. So uh, we as, at, at least me as a philosoph uh, philosophical practitioner, I try to wonder what is new because I start to feel uh, another human, uh, another kind of human being, a human being that are not uh, strictly a uh, person lies on my uh, physical uh, physical location. I'm everywhere. I can be uh, here in my uh, hometown and be also uh, there with you in Moscow and everywhere in the world because you're not all of you in Moscow. You're in India and uh, Israel and United States or wherever. Uh, so I'm uh, virtual uh, ubiquitous. I'm everywhere but nowhere in physical, so because physically I was more restrained. My uh, physical body cannot move so much. I cannot go to visit Moscow now because it's not allowed. I cannot go to visit India as I, uh, as I please. So, but I can speak with you and I can interact with you in, in uh, some um, extended reality. But this extended reality, uh, change something in, in how I feel and how I perceive me as a limited being. And uh, I, I could perceive me uh, as an um, um, entity that are going to another uh, dimension of uh, space and time. So this uh, requires a new philosophical uh, interpretation. And uh, why? Because uh, I uh, no longer feel uh, a person that are limited to his own uh, corporality. I'm uh, more limited of my technological com corporality. Uh, my laptop, my uh, camera are part of me because I uh, can express myself through this uh, device. So I extend my corporality in, uh, in virtual reality. And that needs uh, a new philosophical understanding. So what so about this was my philosophical practice and about medicalization of uh, social life in this uh, period um, so I uh, tried to uh, to uh, counsel and I tried to uh, to give um, some um, uh, philosophical uh, virtual cafe it was uh, uh, about the philosoph uh, virtual philosophical cafe I wrote uh, sometimes ago on related to virtualization of social spaces but uh, now I do uh, I develop three or four uh, uh, virtual philosophical cafe here in uh, Romania with um, people affected by uh, coronavirus and uh, with, uh, with have uh, relatives as close uh, friends and families that were uh, ill and sick uh, on coronavirus because uh, I uh, teach and I uh, have some activities in uh, Suchava, the, the place where uh, in Romania was the, the most cases of uh, infection in the whole country. Uh, too, uh, too, much, too, much, too much more for, from uh, different uh, areas of the country. So uh, there was need of uh, not only the psychological counseling to clarify how to deal with uh, uh, how to deal with the fear, how to deal with uh, afraid, how to deal with uh, uh, this uh, medicalization of social life, but how philosophically understanding this turn on this turn on uh, to um, a new uh, challenges that uh, medicalization of social life and virtualization of social interaction. Uh, give to us in the time of pandemics, where world, uh, external world could uh, close to us and 
a world that is virtual, a world that does not exist in physical reality, come to us and uh, uh, even oppress us. Because virtual now can oppress, but the virtual does not physically exist, does not have corporality. But we can uh, feel uh, as avatar identity, and this, how to create an avatar identity, and how to deal with as uh, our identity is uh, I, something I do with uh, uh, people who want to understand this in philosophical uh, practice. And uh, that's why I uh, like to, uh, to share this uh, with you, because it's uh, something, uh, was something amazing for me, uh, because many people says, well, I'm in the new reality. I'm in um, another era of humanity. It's not about uh, transhumanism or posthumanism, but it's closer to it's humanity to oh, uh, already because I could not interact because of coronavirus in in real life. But I could interact with total strangers for me that I never encountered in other way, and uh, this. Uh, uh, they uh, ask, how can I do with, in this uh, situation? How can I be human? What, it, what means for me to be human? And of course, uh, Socratic dialogue could uh, exist in this uh, condition. And uh, to Socratic dialogue, I can, uh, I can um, uh, raise questions about uh, how they understand his own identity. What is our identity? What, what is else? Okay, as an avatar identity, it's I quote uh, from uh, other presentation, but in, in general, I uh, talk with the clients about what is to be real. Uh, am I only a body? Am I, am I a body and mind? Have, am I something different than a body and mind? So this, uh, are together with um, spirituality, but basically we need a philosophical understanding of this, because a religious understanding could drive to, uh, to an um, opening of, of um, difficult situation for uh, people, and uh, because uh, access to religious uh, practice are uh, restricted, and uh, virtual Easter occur, and uh, we uh, celebrate Easter on virtual reality on, and uh, on TV and so on. But is that real? I have too many people ask me what, what I'm uh, seeing, what I'm uh, answering, what I'm hearing is, is this me, is this my reality? How could we deal with extended reality? The reality we live on is too far extended as the reality of Socrates or as the reality of Kant, because we uh, have access to purely mind that created reality. Uh, it's reality where we interact and we live in, because most of us already live in, in uh, Facebook or YouTube or something like this in virtual reality, but do, uh, do they still live in, the, in our reality, in current reality? And uh, of course I uh, uh, try to understand for myself and with my clients together, uh, is it important for us to be in current reality? What is different? How we, um, how we, uh, uh, understand our mortality, our finitude. Uh, of course, I can enter into, uh, into transmodern and uh, transhumanist uh, debate on how we can uh, acquire the virtual immortality through uh, mind download and mind transfer to, uh, to some devices. It's not immediate reality in this. Uh, COVID-19 crisis, but uh, it was evoked from this uh, 
uh, restricted of uh, external world. And uh, other problem that was uh, important to counsel was how to wear a mask. Because mask was a symbol, it was a symbol of um, uh, the person who are bad, uh, they do, they steal, uh, they, do, uh, they uh, uh, commit murder and so on, and they wear mask. But now everyone should uh, should uh, wearing mask, and uh, this uh, limit our face to face encountering with each other. How how to encounter? Uh, the other, if I and him and his wearing both, uh, we, we are both wearing a mask. So we are not share our identity. We are not share our uh, express of our feelings through uh, our face, through our face image. How can this uh, affect and how, what we can do not to affect our encountering with the other, with the other as uh, the reflection of ourselves, to, to the other as reflection of the world. So this was uh, the general questions I answering in uh, Virtual Philo Cafe and in the individual counseling that I do. And um, I conduct this, uh, uh, these uh, workshops, of course, uh, online. So, uh, the answer was, in, including philosophy moves online, and uh, is this uh, the end of the world we knew, uh, as we knew? It's, it's uh, the end of history, as other philosophers said. Is is it the end of history, or of the world as we previously know, and is a new beginning for another, for another humanity, another? Well, this uh, uh, philosophical questions. Is, was in, very important for uh, for my friends, for my uh, colleagues, and for my clients to understand where are they in this new in this new world and this new reality, uh, how we uh, how we reconnect each other, how we reconnect with our own uh, reality. So um, the answers was uh, few uh, practice derived from uh, spiritual and uh, from uh, meditative practice, try to uh, reconnect with our inner reality, our inner philosopher, if you like, and uh, through guided uh, meditation, guided uh, uh, dream states, and uh, also through, through asking uh, questions about present moment, to be in the, in the present, to, to uh, understand what is a real me in this new, uh, in this new environment of, uh, of technology. What is real me? And how can we do? Uh, we meditate on what is important for us. We, uh, I, I wrote for a few papers on uh, appreciative uh, philosophical counseling. I will not uh, present this again. Uh, you can find it in the journal of APPA. Uh, but generally it's uh, about uh, to understand what gives us meaning to live. It is about uh, appreciative uh, philosophical practices to reflect on what is that things that give us the feeling of being alive, a feeling of being important, a feeling of being a person, a feeling of being something more than nothing, or uh, to have a, a right to live, to have right to be different, and so on. So basically, I just make uh, a questions: What is to be me? And I'm receiving some answers to. Uh, to uh, the persons, I the, the persons, there was um, I repeat, it was in uh, one uh, in one city. There was very effect 
to this uh, coronavirus, one of the most affected in this in this uh, country, in uh, Romania, and uh, they answered this, well, I was afraid. I was very much afraid, but in this moment of afraid, I realized that I'm, uh, that I'm together with the others, even in virtual reality. And the feeling of together was well, one of the answers, of course. The feeling of togetherness gives the straight to be myself. And togetherness could be achieved even if there is no, no physical contact with only virtual. So togetherness can be virtual, can be virtualized. And um, otherwise, uh, other answers was uh, religious experience moved from uh, uh, churches uh, of uh, walls, of bricks, to interior church, to internalize the connection with uh, supreme reality, with God or other um, way of understanding divinity. And uh, uh, we share the feeling, the, the feelings of being part of uh, uh, divinity, being part of uh, something more than uh, limited life. So uh, this being part of, of more than a limited life is also a, a virtualization. And they say, well, but all human history, there was another answer that I uh, received that I give to, uh, to practitioners uh, that uh, in whole history of humanity, we live in virtual reality, not in, in the real. And uh, there was an example of the movie, the Englishman who claimed a hill and, uh, and gave down a mountain. It's about uh, an, a, a town in Scotland, um, in Wales, in Great Britain. Uh, the, the, the people living there, all they uh, believe that they are uh, mountain men, uh, highlanders. So, um, when uh, people from London, from Geographical Society of London, uh, gave uh, go there to measure the highest, of the, the high of the forms of relief they are there, uh, they uh, they uh, find out that there are, there is no mountains, there only a hill there. Uh, how could they be a mountain man if there is no mountain? All our reality or our identity was a social construct. For them, they construct their own reality as a mountain man upon uh, a form of religion they live uh, gathered to, uh, near to this uh, form of religion. Uh, they believe that there are mountains, but actually was downgrades to a uh, hill who establish uh, the, what is mountain on a hill, what a hill is. Uh, this was uh, established in, uh, in communications. In the communication process, some people establish what the definition of the hill is or the definition of mountain is. In general, what the definition of what is real, what is an object, the definition are. And we live in a, in a virtual world where we understand the definition of what is it. So this idea, uh, of course, came from uh, Plato. Uh, but it's uh, close to our uh, current understanding of the social construction. So this was uh, uh, a dialogue uh, that I uh, practice in one of our uh, philosophical uh, cafe in this uh, period. And uh, people understand and discuss about uh, how they construct their own uh, reality, and a preferred reality, their own uh, uh, idea of what uh, them are and what are the finitude and what they are ang angust. Why are they angust? And uh, why are the why they are angst? Are they uh, angust of dying, of being sick, or of uh, the change, the, the too rapid, too fast changes in uh, in uh, how we live and why and uh, meaningless of this situation? Because uh, COVID-19 
crisis is more a crisis of meaning. It's uh, a meaningless of what we understand about us. Uh, it's uh, a crisis of uh, ethics in, in self. I wrote uh, a book, it's uh, in Romanian now, but uh, it will be in English uh, at the end of August. Bioethics in Crisis or Crisis of Bioethics and Anthropology of Pandemia in a Medicalized Society. Uh, I uh, discussed there the results of uh, this uh, uh, philosophical practice uh, with uh, starting from uh, bioethical uh, uh, discussions of what uh, is uh, uh, health ethics what uh, how could be understanding ethics and what we can do if we are uh, put into situation to to decide what life worth to to believe and what life doesn't worth to believe especially when uh, uh, medical personnel should uh, should uh, ch should uh, choose between the person to be put and to and to life supports uh, uh, or uh, to be disconnecting from uh, the device of life support and who is uh, to choose. It's supposed to be an autonomous decision, but who can decide this in uh, the lack of uh, technology, in the lack of uh, this uh, device. So uh, medical staff should uh, take this deci decision. It's not necessarily an ethical decision, but they could understand philosophically what are the significance of the decision for their own or for their patients. So this was also a subject to uh, one of our um, virtual philosophical uh, cafe organized in, uh, in uh, Suceava University with uh, uh, some uh, people that actually uh, participate there, medical staff, and uh, discuss also with the, the medical uh, staff about the significance of uh, what means for them to give treatment, to treat uh, others. Uh, and uh, uh, this philosophical, virtual philosophical cafe, uh, starting from um, uh, the idea of uh, what is the significance for us of the event we live in. And we, uh, uh, we uh, try to understand what is uh, the situation and we are living in? How can we deal with, how can internalize the situation and how we, uh, we uh, manifest in this situation? And what I try to, as moderator of uh, philosophical uh, uh, cafe, uh, virtual philosophical cafe, was to uh, drive the, the discussion uh, from uh, uh, crying and for their own uh, uh, problems and uh, shout their own problems to the significance of the problem and how to uh, how to understand this problem uh, how to understand the situation and how to react not to, uh, emotional react but how reasonable react to this uh, situation and how could understand and how could internalize this uh, reaction what the significance they give to the situation, and of course, uh, significant most of significance have uh, a real uh, philosophical meaning because uh, was in terms of uh, our finitude toward the universe, and understanding this finitude, and understanding uh, the limitless of the universe, but understanding our uh, progress as society as individual and the need to situate ourselves in a position that we can grow from this position. So there was uh, uh, results of uh, that uh, discussions. Um, I think that was what I can, I, what I wish to, to share with you. So if you have questions, uh, so I was not so clear or have any curiosity or so on, please uh, uh, ask questions and discuss about my idea, what the idea was presented 
and uh, about what you do in this period and what was uh, topics of your uh, own uh, experience in counseling the persons that was affected by uh, the coronavirus uh, crisis. Thank you. Very thought provoking. I was, I'm thinking that um, now that the pandemic has kind of given us a foil, wow. a way to compare our normal to something else and decide what is it that is ourselves and what do we like about our life? What do we not like? What do we want to change? How did hospitals make decisions? Is that a good way or a bad way? Uh, there, are, I, I was teaching classes until June, uh, well, during quarantine, and I think that uh, continuing virtually classes gave the students a way to have some stability in their lives, and I became a better teacher because the way that I taught alternatively has kind of turned into an evolution of my teaching. Uh, that I, at the beginning of class, asked students, I started with humanity and I asked them, how are you doing today? What is the thing that you're worried about today? And the, the content that we were learning kind of became a, secondary to that in that we, we addressed the most important pressing thing first. So I, I don't have a question, but I, I want to thank you for the thoughts that uh, kind of turning the alternative world of how we've changed into the evolution of how we've changed, how we can take our lessons from this and improve ourselves and our teaching and our, our consultations. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, for these observations. Uh, of course, myself, I, um, I, well, I'm a, also a teacher, professor, so I teach in this uh, period, but I try to change the way of, uh, I usually teach, I uh, use some uh, uh, experience of philosophical practice in teaching activity, and now I uh, go on uh, online, on Facebook and on YouTube, and in live uh, uh, discussion mm -hmm. with, also with the student, and uh, to, uh, to many other people, and to not to let, to give a lecture, to present something, at a lesson, but to reflect of the significance of, uh, pan of uh, uh, pandemia, of significance of, all, uh, of how this pandemia affects us. And it was uh, the changing in, in my own uh, way to, to teach uh, bioetic, uh, for example. And uh, this semester I was a uh, class uh, of uh, bioetics and the significance of uh, of ethics, and I have uh, two uh, two questions, two uh, remarks on the, on the chat. Uh, Mr. Hatsegano, thank you to my colleagues for presentation. I think the pandemic state can offer a new step for us uh, to discover and find a new place for practice in online agora to meet the client or group. Uh, uh, we must try. Yes, um, online agora is uh, very important now because uh, in this agora was moved. Uh, uh, too many energy, too many uh, influencers, and the people who try to uh, disconnect people, uh, too many conspirational theory are going uh, to Agora, too many um, persons, uh, they are haters, and uh, uh, the, their voice go, go to, to hate each other, to to destroy it, each, uh, the connection, uh, to destroy the unity of society. So our philosophical voice should be there in Agora, and virtual Agora uh, also, because there are people uh, who need us and who cannot contact us in our usual uh, office, in our uh, philosophical cabinet or something. But they could contact us on, uh, on virtual, not only because they are not in our town, in our city, and they are globally, and we can counsel the, uh, on worldwide, not only in local, uh, 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 in local population, but all wide, but because some people does not uh, dare to, to go to a, philosoph a philosopher cons consultation, at least. I uh, encountered this situation where that person said, 
I'm not God, so philosopher, philosopher is too much for me. I'm, go, I'm going to, to ask a, a priest or a, a, a psychologist, but not a philosopher because a philosopher is too much for me. And uh, in uh, virtual agora, they could ask because they are feel not themselves, but have but transfer our uh, their identity to their avatars, and they are not themselves, and they are, they represent themselves as avatar, and avatar is not tangible, uh, is not uh, affected by uh, about the dialogues. They could uh, easily, for some of them, uh, they could easily. Uh, react and uh, share their problem and share their emotion, but uh, most of all share their uh, inner questions, the inner uh, troubles, the inner fears. Uh, another uh, uh, question, during the pandemic, virtual interaction has given us an opportunity to do something constructive as well as stay balanced and uh, avoid stress. Well. Of course, uh, virtual interaction give us the strength to, to stay balanced. It's more th it's more important to uh, to stay balanced, uh, but to avoid stress. I think it's more stress. Uh, it's more stressing in virtual interaction when we are not seeing each other as face. When we are not using our corporality that we are used to. That we you we usually seeing each other we use express our corporality our way of being but moving to the thought change our our way to express ourselves our way to think about ourselves so it's a lot of stress in this situation so that is why we, uh, we and they need more philosophical counseling than than before and uh, thank you uh, another question uh, uh, please jose uh, hello, everyone. Hello, Antonio. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, um, I know that I agree with you that uh, this media, internet, it is very interesting for our students and for our clients. For me, it was a very great experience because one reason and is that normally our students and if you are working with clients that are very young, for them it is very easy to speak by this media. Maybe because, as you said, uh, we are an avatar and we are not a person, and the professor is an avatar and is not a person. So uh, I have been working in philosophical counseling by internet, but for me it was a discovery in the classroom. And I think that it is very important and very interesting. The problem was that I open uh, some WhatsApp groups, some groups from WhatsApp, from the application of WhatsApp. And the problem is that uh, time is doesn't exist. I mean, uh, I have questions all the days and all nights, because for a student it's very easy to make questions at three in the night, at four in the, in the night. And I think that this could be a problem, the telework, it's a problem if you open too much this situation. So I think that we have to reflect on how we are going to uh, work with our time in this situation, because it is very complicated to say people, OK, don't talk from this hour to this the other hour. So the public space and the private space is broken here. The, the public time and the mm, private time has been broken. So my question is more, I don't know if it is a question or a commentary, but I think that we have to reflect about our times and about uh, who are our students. Normally our students are students and they don't belong to my personal space. But uh, now some of my students are in my private, private space. So. What is a student? Something from my family or something from my work or something in the middle? I think that we have open very interesting questions. I don't know what you think about all of this. Yes, uh, it's a very interesting questions or the a remark. Well, yeah, I personally think that um, 
starting with this phenomena of virtualization of uh, social interaction or virtualization of uh, social space and social time. Uh, starting with this virtualization, the boundary between private life and uh, public life and, uh, is, uh, uh, became uh, very, uh, very subtle. So uh, there was an invasion of, uh, of public, uh, public life into our personal life. But this was not happening in this time, was in this pandemic time. It was happening before. Uh, it was happening when uh, we start to uh, to uh, put our lives on uh, Facebook. Uh, it start when we we express ourselves mm. on uh, and our reality on a virtual uh, space where everyone can uh, uh, control us and can uh, have uh, opinion about uh, about uh, my private uh, life. So. This was not uh, a new, but is a serious uh, problem. Uh, how to how to manage to balance uh, the, this uh, life, the private life, to to public uh, to public life. Some of them, some of us, start uh, tends to to move to uh, to all of li of life to be public. Some of them, some of us, have this uh, tendency to put all public. There is no private life, and there is nothing uh, like this. And, but some of them wants to, to remain uh, private, at least uh, some basically uh, things uh, about uh, their uh, lives and uh, uh, times and uh, have to time to go to somewhere, some place uh, in vacation, have time to sleep or, or something like this. But I have done a research on, um, on the values and how we, uh, we uh, uh, react to the, to the values and and uh, in our country in our part of the country northeast uh, Romanian I observed that uh, uh, there are an imperialism of uh, uh, public values through uh, through uh, of, uh, of public values to private values and we try to to import uh, the values from um, from uh, uh, public uh, from public sphere to our uh, private so in our private uh, sphere we have to uh, we have to uh, for example to love uh, our neighbor to love each other and so on but in uh, in public sphere we have to be uh, equitable we have to be fair so we try to uh, go to give more importance to fairness than to cherish and to love and uh, to our uh, private values. Our public values uh, goes uh, against our private values and uh, our uh, public life uh, was imperialistic to all of our, uh, of our time. So yes, uh, uh, this uh, will be uh, uh, more and more this problem and will be uh, which, and we should uh, can counseling uh, clients on this uh, problem how to to balance their experience on public life and on private life and uh, especially in this uh, pandemic time on all time was both public and private because we don't we go on our private uh, homes we, we go we stay home so our president and president of Romania said Stay home, stay home, don't go anywhere, stay home. But at home we have to work. We, got, we, uh, we came to, uh, in home with our work problems. We uh, teach at home, we uh, make uh, business at home, we make affairs, and all of them comes in our private, uh, in our private life. So that uh, was also uh, a problem. Uh, yes, another was a, a questions in uh, in um, in the chat room. Uh, I don't know the name because it's in Russian. I like the idea of virtual agora because uh, it presents uh, uh, memories from time when uh, in some society people wasn't able to practice religion, philosophy, material arts, uh, and so on, and uh, they always find the secret place to do it. Virtual Agora can also reach uh, people who might not get an opportunity 
to be part. Yes, uh, Virtual Agora uh, could understand uh, uh, also uh, uh, a place for retreat. I always trade uh, the Virtual Agora as also a place to uh, where to retreat ourselves from uh, uh, from uh, uh, from life. And so this again, uh, the distinction with private life and and public life, we can uh, retreat in uh, we can uh, uh, retreat ourselves in Agora too and be in simultaneously in public and in private. For example, in the, a session of uh, meditation or in uh, Buddhist empowerment, I had uh, participate uh, this weekend to a Buddhist em Buddhist empowerment in uh, in Kalachakra, for example. Uh, they were given from Hong Kong and I received from Romania, but it was a retreat. And I feel to be retreat with uh, other uh, colleagues and so on. So it's uh, another dimension of, uh, of uh, space. Uh, Garji Jen, however, the uncertainty is having an adverse effect on many. Yes, uncertainty is uh, a problem that um, having effect and uh, affect all of us. And uncertainty is not only because we we face the fear, the fear of death, the fear of sickness, but we we are uncertain of economical future or how we uh, what we do after the crisis. We have, still we have a place of work. Still we uh, have a democratic society because this uh, restriction could be continuous a lot of time and the, the uh, democratic society falls, falls apart. So this is uh, many uncertainty and we should deal with it. So yes, it was uh, important. It is important topics for philosophical uh, counseling, but it's important now after the first part of uh, uh, coronavirus crisis, uh, was uh, over and is now in this uh, the second we say in Romania the second uh, wave of coronavirus uh, that is something uh, in some way uh, bigger than uh, the first one. In face of the uncertainty, it's a kind of a provocative question which goes with my own uh, talk about the time. In times where everything is going so blurred. We are uncertainty. We don't know economically what's going to happen. We have a moral issues that we haven't been before, like, for instance, taking care of the vulnerable, see, uh, old or, or sick, or taking care of the majority of the uh, people who don't know, and this kind of uh, uh, dilemmas and uh, what should we do and the interference in our private life by authorities and uh, etc etc uh do you think that uh, a retreat to meditation is the right thing i'm not sure well uh, uh we talk about the balance in life so uh retreat and meditation is one part of the balance and be active is uh, the other uh, the other uh, part of the balance i prefer to be active and uh, i uh, want to be active as uh, uh, as many time as i uh, as i can but also i have to experience to experience something uh, new something different to feel the experience of otherness of otherness as in cultural way as a Buddhist, since I am a Christian, and uh, and, and to understand how they how they really are, the Buddhist, uh, and how am I in in face to this uh, cultural uh, different uh, cultural differences? But uh, uh, to uh, to this uh, point, uh, I um, think uh, uh, there is an extraordinary opportunity for philosophical practice this uh, to, to counsel in the in ethical dilemma uh, to counsel uh, as I, uh, and I told you on medical ethics on medical di ethical dilemma not on uh, on bioethics in itself but on how bioethics change in this crisis situation how this ethics could adapt so uh, the philosopher 
should uh, intervene there because medical ethics, bioethics was made by practitioner in medicine, for example, but now they should come and they do the medical, some, med some medical people come to us, uh, to philosophers, and how we, how we can do this, how we, uh, to, how we make the new changes in what is ethical, how we deal with this dilemma. If we cannot give the access and so on, how we can uh, deal with, uh, with this uh, uncertainty. Can we have an, one opinion? No. How we deal with different opinion, how we deal with a different solution, competitive solution. Because for me, a dilemma is competition of values. So if I am in the, comp in two, in the competition of value, two values that I have to choose, how I choose the most important values, since all values are important for me, as I present public values and private values are both important for me. Why I choose, uh, why I choose public values uh, over my uh, my own values, but I uh, discovered that for persons in my region in Romania, most of them choose uh, public values against their own family values. Why and how to how, how to choose? This is for uh, philosophical uh, practice, a place to to practice. Thank you, Antonio, for this very interesting talk on. Uh, philosophical practice in times of the pandemic. I'm sure each one of us who are practicing philosophy would have different kind of narratives of uh, the way we are approaching the problem, the way we are trying to address the issues and concerns of uh, the clients that we are, uh, uh, that, that are reaching us. Uh, yeah, one thing that, uh, uh, that struck me when we were, uh, during your presentation is, uh, uh, you mentioned something like COVID-19 is not about meaning, but it is about meaninglessness. I don't know whether I got it right, right? I hope I am right, I got it right. So if that is the case, that's that's what troubled me because uh, it's not about meaning or meaninglessness. I would consider it to be looking for alternative meanings. You talked about togetherness, togetherness in an alternative way. And you talked about uh, uh, uncertainty. Uh, you, you, you talked about many concepts like virtual as well as public and private. All these things are looking, uh, all these things required to be, uh, alternative conceptions of all these things are required to be understood. When I say this, what I mean is every crisis situation closes certain things and opens certain things for us. And uh, at, it also, at the same time, challenges to look for alternatives, challenges the human beings to look for alternatives. Alternatives in resources, alternatives in conceptions, alternatives in activities as well. What I mean by these three is, when we are looking for alternatives in resources, we are lining up in epistemology. When you are looking for alternative conceptions, it is metaphysics. You are enter entering into metaphysics. And when you are looking at alternative activities, you are entering into axiology, ethics and uh, logic remaining domains. So that is how uh, a crisis, in fact, gives you a lot of opportunities to unexplored, push you to, towards unexplored areas. And that's where I don't consider this to be like closing down something or meaninglessness of something. Rather, it is uh, a, an opportunity for us to look for alternative Oh, sorry, uh, alternatives. You know, basically, uh, it's it's an opportunity for us to look for alternatives. That is how I would see. Uh, I would be happy if you can respond to that. Thank you. Uh, thank you for opportunity of this uh, of this uh, large uh, remark and questions. When I say uh, meaningful or meaningless, meaninglessness is not about well, uh, the the coronavirus crisis has no uh, has no meaning. No, I say we can uh, attach a meaning. A, we can give a sense, a give a meaning to to our to our reality. We can construct our reality. Uh, we can deal with the, uh, the meaning. We, I am a, a constructionist, so I uh, do believe that uh, our uh, meaning is constru is social constructed. But uh, when we cannot understand 
our purpose, our meaning in the situation, and we are in the in the crisis. Uh, in the crisis, it's like a Zen one when we have no answer, have no uh, predetermined answer. How we, how we react at this? The whole world was in a Quan, in a Zen Quan. We cannot react in a, in a classic way. We cannot have an answer. We we do not have a previous uh, uh, pre uh, pre think answer. So it's meaninglessness because we should invent new meanings. We should reinvent ourselves. We should uh, rediscover. And this is philosophical. This is a philosophical. Uh, point we we address in philosophical way because we do not have scientific, we do not have political, we do not have medical uh, in many situations answers. We should return to our philosophical answers. So yes, it could be metaphysical. We if we ask about what is transcendence and so on, it should be ethical also because we have to answer how we do this in practical. But in in all, all these cases, we should come back to, to philosophy. We should come back to philosophy in essence is, uh, is, a, a, is art of questioning ourselves what is significance and give up of all uh, predetermined answers and try to put in this uh, position. So in, body, in Buddhist tradition, in Zen tradition, when you, you encounter in the Quan, you, you have no answer. It's uh, the way we, uh, a new uh, idea, a new illuminations in the way it comes. So maybe the whole planet uh, was in this quant situation. Maybe in the planet, some people, all of us, uh, came to an illumination, not necessarily a spiritual illumination, but uh, one, any kind of illumination. So these yeah, are some you. questions. Yes. Thank you. Thank it's, you. It's, it's a kind of temporary suspension of the existing meanings. It is only a temporary suspension of the existing meanings. Yes. That's what you're calling it as meaninglessness. So in yes. that sense, I agree with you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I think in this case, uh, our confusing time is the best time for philosophy. <laughs> because when the normal life uh, <clears throat> uh, impossible, that uh, uh, appears the chance to live in a philo uh, philosophical way as philosopher. It's very interesting. To... Thank you. Thank you. There are uh, other questions in uh, in chat. If yeah. So the uh, the last question and we <coughs> and please. Yeah. Uh, the question was, I'm thinking in general distance similarity between religions and philosophy. Some, uh, sometimes people ask me how you can uh, be a Christian and doing uh, philosophy. Well, uh, being real Christians for me is to be in closeness of God, be in intimacy with God. So this is also to be philosophical because uh, to be Christians is not only to pray to go to the church and uh, to uh, take uh, uh, confessions or, and uh, community and so on. But is the importance of Orthodox Christianity, for, uh, for instance, is to be there in God. And if you cannot find God in yourself, you cannot find God anywhere in the universe, not philosophically, not religiously and meditatively but in any way but if you can find god in yourself in your heart you can find god everywhere so this was is my my uh, beliefs thank you very much uh, our event uh, has come to an end i thank you very much for uh, the wonderful uh, session yes uh, thank you antonio thank you everyone uh, Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.